That's right. Hello, everyone. Howdy, and welcome back to another AppSmith Live episode. How are you doing? I'm actually doing great. Extremely excited to have this open conversation, this community call event, and looking forward to answering all the questions you're going to be making because we always love to gather feedback and insights from you all, the community, to continue improving. So don't be shy. Say hello in the chat while we get more people onboarded and connected. In case you didn't know me, I'm Kevin Blanco, Senior um, Developer Relations Engineer here at AppSmith and your trusty guide to unlocking the potential of internal enterprise apps. We are completely live today, and the idea of this event is all for you. So you can ask all the questions that you want. So don't be shy. We have our chat. We are um, completely live on multiple um, platforms today. So all the questions that you want to have about our product, where we're heading, if you have questions or not, um, this is the perfect moment to make it happen. Because again, we are completely live today. Um, so also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we are constantly publishing new videos every week. So you are equipped with everything you need to learn in order to build awesome enterprise-ready AppSmith applications. <clears throat> um, actually, I've been a little bit sick uh, throughout the week, so I might be constantly drinking a bit of water because my throat might be still a, a bit hurt, but um, that's the fact of being completely live. Today, we have one of our uh, AppSmith co-founders live to have a refreshing look at our roadmap and what amazing features we have lined up for you all. But before we bring him, I'd like to remind everyone that we have a monthly contest. Today is the last day of the month, so it means that you still have time to submit your template to the community portal uh, in case you haven't. And remember that this month's topic is AI. And tomorrow, we will be announcing the March topic and sharing the winner of the February contest. Um, also, on the other hand, I am extremely excited to share uh, probably the first big event of the year. We have our uh, AppSmith Build event. It's happening next March 19th and the 20th. And uh, this event is to see how you can level up your tools to streamline customer interactions, automate operations, and improve employee productivity by learning how modern local development and AI are powering a new generation of high-impact internal applications faster than ever before. So you definitely want to sign up for this event. I'm going to be putting a QR code on the screen right now. <clears throat> And that will take you directly to the page to reserve your completely free spot for this event. Or in case you cannot scan the QR code, maybe you didn't have time to scan it, visit just appsmith.com and you will see all the information about the event. We have special guests. We're going to be showcasing a lot of different topics and you can see the agenda and everything by scanning the QR code that you see on your screen right now and subscribe to this completely free event. All right, so I think that's it for a warm welcoming to all to all of you. I hope you are putting your messages on the chat right now. Hey, Julia, I see also Oscar. I, I see also Loktari. This is great. All right, so I think it's good enough time for everyone to start warming up and we can bring our special guest today, which is Nikhil. Hey, Nikhil, how's it going? Hey, Kevin. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, hope you feel better. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm feeling feeling better. Um, Nikhil, so uh, today is just an upper conversation. We really don't have like a script or anything like that. But before we jump into like the actual roadmap and maybe answering some of the questions that we might get on the chat, I wanted to share with everyone that this week we had a physical event in India and you know, you can share with us a little bit about the event, what was about it, what what you guys share on that event. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, especially because uh, AppSmith has been a, a fully remote team, uh, as well as building like a you know, global product out of India. Uh, it can be quite hard to uh, interface with uh, a lot of the community. Uh, so we had AppSmith meet earlier this week, um, which was a live event uh, where we got to uh, meet uh, quite a few folks in the community who are using the product, 
uh, quite a lot of interesting questions. Um, at the event uh, specifically, um, Abhishek and I uh, both talked about uh, the, you know the key milestones uh, of AppSmith, uh, what uh, makes us unique, why why we are here, uh, and what the future uh, for the project as well as uh, the company looks like. Um, and it was a really exciting uh, time for us because uh, we got to see directly from the entire community what they thought about the project, uh, what they were thinking about. Uh, the future of uh, the company and how they were actually using it inside their organizations. Um, so it really um, left us with deeper insights into how organizations were beginning to adopt AppSmith, what their critical use cases were, what their pain points were, what their concerns were, and also what they were really excited about and what they really loved. Um, the other really fun thing that uh, we did at the event was uh, we unveiled a part of our roadmap, uh, which I'll also talk a little bit about today. Um, and we got to share with the community some of the key interesting features that uh, we're focusing on this year. Uh, and we got to hear their feedback about it and what their thoughts on them were. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds super interesting. I'd love to be there in person, but like you mentioned, we are a completely remote team. And uh, for those who could be there, that was great. Um, but we have events like the AppSmith Bill, who's going to be completely online for everyone around the world. So yeah, it's good to see those event happenings as well in a physical manner. So that way people can connect directly with the AppSmith folks, which they are amazing. So yeah, that's great. Um, Nikhil, why don't you just, to get things started, uh, share some of the key milestones and achievements for AppSmith throughout the last year? You know, if you can share with us some of the key goals that we have achieved and how that's projecting us to the future. Yeah, you know, uh, last year was a really great year for us. Um, I think there are a lot of various things from, uh, you know, we saw over uh, 100,000 apps, uh, you know, being built. Um, we, uh, we saw over 30,000 GitHub stars on the repo which is some sort of validation that, hey, developers actually do like this. Um, we saw over 5,000 commits to support all of this. Um, but to me, the most interesting thing that uh, we saw was that we saw widespread adoption inside really large enterprises for the very first time. And that was a very key milestone because when we really think about uh, AppSmith and how we started it, um, it was uh, inception as this open source project for developers to build their simple CRUD applications and add it panels. Um, and it's really heartwarming to now see um, this kind of adoption inside really large enterprises using us today for mission critical tooling. Uh, everything from customer 360 dashboards to um, inventory management to CRMs to um, simple dashboards that pull in data from various data sources. Um, it's used for loan, loan approvals to things like uh, you know, KYC management. Uh, and so I think that, uh, that has been uh, quite the game changer and uh, it sparked our minds as well as to how do we better serve uh, this uh, new phase of growth, uh, this new adoption that we're seeing and uh, how do we evolve the, pro the project as well as the uh, organization uh, to be able to also better serve these mission critical use cases. Yeah, that's definitely true. And it's amazing to see how AppSmith is uh, growing in big enterprises and how we're solving critical mission issues and problems that they have, which is the other thing I wanted to ask you, like, and I know this is important for everyone in the audience, what are the primary pain points and challenges that AppSmith aims to address for developers and businesses? Because when we think about AppSmith, I, there's a lot of different areas that we definitely solve problems in the spectrum of the internal tools. They are specific for different teams like marketing, but also for tech teams managing dev operations. I know that we have customers who are doing completely management or huge fleet of servers using AppSmith. So the use cases are huge. So ex expanding on the pain points that AppSmith solve, I think can give a general idea to our audience like, oh, I didn't know AppSmith could be used for this as well. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a great uh, question. Um, you know, honestly, when we started the project, um, AppSmith was really focused on helping backend developers build UI really quickly. And so you know, that's one of the key pain points that we kind of double down on and try to make easier over time. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple way for uh, developers to create uh, dashboards, workflows, 
um, UI on top of their backend data so that other business users can actually interact with it rather than them having to write scripts or uh, you know, do the work themselves. Um, over time, there has been a fair amount of uh, evolution in it. And what we've understood uh, the core business need is to actually improve the operational efficiency of these teams. Um, and the reason that these teams today are not as efficient as they'd like to be is because there is a lot of data fragmentation inside organizations. Um, what this means is that today, because of the number of SaaS applications out there, um, a lot of the customer data is actually fragmented across tools like Zendesk uh, or payment tools like Stripe uh, or even inside your own uh, CRMs uh, like Salesforce or uh, HubSpot, uh, as well as, of course, you likely have your own database like Postgres or MongoDB. And so because this data is so fragmented, uh, there are now tools to access data uh, for each of these different data sources, but that becomes very inefficient for operations because they have to now context switch across all of these different data sources. And they now need to also create workflows for themselves that are robust, that are flexible, that are fast, and that can be quite a challenge. So what AppSense is really helping um, developers and organizations do is improve their operational efficiency by connecting all of these different data sources, whether it's a database, an API, a SaaS tool, and help them build applications as well as workflows between these different tools so that their operational efficiency can go up. Some common things that we see here are, for example, customer support, where somebody might reach out to support saying, hey, I haven't received my order. Um, I'm very unhappy. I'd like a refund. And now a support agent can very easily look up who this user is just based on their ticket, find out what their order actually was, research where the order is in the entire logistics team, um, and then verify that it's actually a problem, they can actually escalate and trigger a refund to Stripe. And all of this is possible inside a single admin panel, which makes it very, very fast and efficient for these users. And similarly, we're also seeing use cases like Customer 360, uh, where we know that a lot of data can be there inside Salesforce um, regarding your accounts. But unfortunately, Salesforce can be quite expensive for a lot of users, right? Every seat costs quite a bit. And so typically only a sales team will have access to Salesforce data, but that's not really fair to the rest of the organization where the product team probably wants to learn, hey, how are the sales conversations going? What are some of the product dependencies that are actually there? The support team likely wants to know, hey, you know, these users from our customers have actually asked us for these particular problems and uh, is it recorded against their uh, customer account or not? And the customer success team likely wants to know, like, hey, for this uh, account that's due for renewal, uh, what are the top problems that they're facing and has product actually actioned them? And so because all of this data is today fragmented and not everybody has access to Salesforce, it can be quite a challenge operationally. But app makes that very easy. It allows you to create dashboards as well as workflows between all of these different data sources and therefore improve the operational efficiency of these orgs. Uh, and so that's the kind of adoption and the kind of use cases that we are typically seeing and the problems that we're solving for organizations today. Yeah, that's definitely true. And one of the key values that I see on the Apps Meet AI front is, and this is something I was talking with uh, MongoDB, we were featured on the MongoDB podcast two days ago, we were talking about how to build rapid application powered by AI. And all of these features of Apps Meet, which you can bring multiple data sources, but the fact that you can use Apps Meet AI to analyze your content and in just a matter of seconds, get your content categorized, summarized, being able to analyze images, it's just something completely new in the market that you don't have to put any API key. You don't have to worry about what element you have to train or you have to use. Everything is done by AppSmith. It's completely focused on your enterprise and understands your data. So if AppSmith was already a game changer to being able to manage all of these different fragmented data into a single application, and now you can power it to the next level and make AI understand all your information and give you insights about it and work for you. I think that's even higher value for everyone out there. Yeah, totally. Uh, you know, when we think about um, AI, uh, it, there's no doubt that AI is going to be used in a large part of applications uh, to just improve operational efficiency. But the problem with AI today is that it can be quite difficult to actually bring it effectively into your operational workflows. 
Uh, and that's because AI, firstly, is never going to be accurate uh, to a very high degree. And so it's very useful when you're able to create an application where AI can sit beside an actual user and AI can do a lot of the heavy lifting and the user can now behave as a reviewer or a moderator for the AI's work so that they can just check the work and approve it rather than doing the work themselves. And so AppSmith is really focusing on making it a lot easier to bring AI into your operational workflows so that you can actually improve the efficiency of these workflows. And here there are three core tenets that we're trying to focus on. The first being that how do we ensure that the performance of AI is actually very good? The second being that how do we ensure that AI is also secure because it needs to be adopted inside large organizations uh, and data security is of utmost concern to them. And third, how do we improve the accuracy of AI for all these use cases uh, or enable humans to come in the loop along with AI to better correct its responses? Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely uh, great. And we were actually able to showcase AppSmith AI to the MongoDB audience and they were shocked. Like, that's amazing. And we, we receive a lot of comments from most of them who never used AppSmith and, and they were shocked. And I think that's that's what we love about AppSmith, that every time I showcase AppSmith to a developer, they're like mind blown. Like, why didn't I know about this platform before? And and I think that's, that's, that's the game factor of AppSmith, which is like, the surprising factor that I didn't know it could do all of this for me and still have control and still being open source and still being able to self-host it. So that's completely amazing. Uh, Nikhil, let's just start, uh, you know, bringing the conversation to the actual roadmap. Why don't you tell us the, where the roadmap is heading? What are we going to be launching soon? How things are looking in the front? Yeah, uh, absolutely happy to do that. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, right, as an order, we're kind of evolving and uh, we're seeing this emerging need for uh, machine critical applications inside enterprises. And when we kind of think about that, um, there are two key focus areas for the year. So the first is how do we build out capabilities uh, inside the platform to better support these mission critical use cases so that there is ease of adoption inside large, large organizations. Um, as well as we're able to rely, be extremely reliable as a platform. Um, but that's not all, because we truly understand that enterprises really care about developer experience. You know? and, and that's why we're going to continue to double down on developer experience and introduce all our platform capabilities in a way that is extremely developer friendly and developer first, so that it continues to improve the value proposition of the platform for developers. We are extremely committed to making AppSmith a, a really easy way for developers to build all of their internal applications and improve their operational efficiency. So that's that's kind of uh, our direction for the year. And when you kind of think about these problems, right, Kevin, um, the first thing that we've understood about um, enterprises is that they have a plethora, a plethora of large applications that um, they need to actually manage and maintain. And so a big question arises, which is, do we really have the tools to maintain the quality of these applications, right? That becomes, that's one of the key factors for them. The second is, are we able to drive standardization in the way that these applications are developed as well as deployed? Because we have so many of these applications, but we need better ways to manage and maintain them. And the third is, how do we accelerate development inside our organization while still ensuring that we have the same level of quality met inside our entire application suite, right? And so with all of these things in mind, um, one of the first things that we're really investing in is packages. And so packages is a really interesting feature that is a reusable entity inside AppSmith that consists of widgets, queries, and JavaScript that can be bundled together and distributed across all your applications and workspaces and instances, right? And what Packages really does is it allows these organizations to have a single point where they can bundle all of their business logic so that whenever they update their business logic, they can ensure that it is propagated to all instances that are consuming this business logic. So this helps with ease of maintenance, it helps with standardization, as well as it helps with the acceleration of development 
as a whole, right? And packages are built very uniquely because we understand that first off, these packages provide an abstraction layer that developers can use to hide away complex business logic from other developers so that they can actually build faster. But not only that, packages are also composable. So packages can reference each other and you can actually build multiple layers of abstraction so that you can continue to amplify your development velocity as much as you'd like. Right? The higher level of abstraction, the faster you're going essentially. Um, and not only is our packages going to be upgradable, which is like at a single point you can propagate updates, packages are also going to be versioned, which means you can selectively choose which one of the versions of the package you actually want to distribute for an update and ensure that all of your package work is uh, going to the right consumers at the right time. So this is one of the most uh, first exciting features that uh, you know, we are really investing in and uh, we are pretty excited about. And uh, packages should, should uh, you know, be entering uh, beta by the end of the month. Uh, so that's going to be uh, very, very, uh, uh, very, very exciting for us. That's wow. extremely exciting. And, and that's part of some of the conversations we have had with customers, which, you know, they have a, a set of applications and they want to reutilize some of the logic, data sources, uh, and, and different things and pack them to reuse them in other in other applications and even have them in source code and being able to control those packages. So yeah, that's one of the key features that I know a lot of people were expecting in the roadmap. And um, and I'm super excited to showcase that. Uh, hopefully the beta will be out soon and I will be able to start creating some content and videos around it. So you are equipped with everything you need to know once that's generally available to everyone. Um, and you can start working with uh, reusable packages. Yeah, and actually we are currently running a closed beta for this. So uh, if anybody watching is interested, uh, you can always try to support at appsman.com and uh, look to get uh, access to the uh, closed beta packages feature. Um, and so, uh, you know, along with that, Kevin, uh, the next really interesting uh, feature we have on our roadmap uh, comes back to, you know, one of the early roots of Fastmith, where we were really focusing on helping developers build the UI and about their data, right? But as we learned more about our users and their applications, we found that their core need was to actually improve their operational efficiency. And so while we're currently very useful to help build an interface for humans to actually interact with their data, they also want a way so that their different backend data sources can also interface with each other. And so with that in mind, we are actually also launching workflows this year. And workflows is a very unique way for developers to enable their backend data sources to send data and write business logic across each other. But at the same time, it's very unique because it also allows you to bring humans into the, into the loop in these workflows. So at any point in time, if you feel that a particular workflow needs an approver, it needs a checker, you can very easily assign a task to a user inside the loop and you can resolve that task using various business logic because Appsmith Workflows is actually built to be developer first. Most workflow tools in the market today are uh, generally visual based and they work really well for non-technical users who are trying to do simple ETL. But because we are a developer first product, we're actually building a code first approach to workflows that will enable developers to connect multiple systems but also write complex business logic, such as human in the loop approval workflows. And so that's the second thing that we're really, really excited about. Yeah, I know workflows is something that people have been asking. And uh, one of our members who's actually watching, I know that probably Oscar is watching, um, Oscar Santana has been doing a lot of automation with uh, separate platforms. And I know that he will be super excited as multiple of our customers to see that workflows are, are actually coming to life. And the fact that you can, you know, have all of these data sources already connected in AppSmith, you have JavaScript code already executed in AppSmith, but if you, if you could put them to talk behind the scenes based upon some actions, that's what workflows actually means. And that's a whole new world of possibilities out there for local enterprise applications. So I do know that workflows are also coming along and they're super um, important for multiple of our customers, right, Anikil? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, as we've kind of um, been um, 
delving into more enterprises and understanding the low code space. Uh, that has always been this core question that you know why do why do most enterprises really dislike low code? You know because uh, there have been a lot of low code platforms, but most of them are really really disliked. And the thing that we are learning is that most low code platforms are actually no code platforms with some sort of proprietary language added to them. And so they're very hard for developers to actually use. They're very hard to extend. They're very hard to customize, right? And overall, they're very hard to bring into your SDLC. Most low code or more like no code platforms are standalone systems that just sit completely outside of your actual SDLC. And that's where our Git feature has been really you know, liked by the community. And uh, it's been an integral part of uh, the, the adoption process. And so we're actually extending support for Git by improving it drastically. For one, it's been in beta for a really long time. And so we've been focusing on fixing a lot of the bugs and issues around the Git feature. We've been focusing on improving its performance. Um, and we're also going to take a step ahead and support full CI-CD integration along with Git. So this means that we'll be able to protect branches set default branches, pin them to specific environments. We'll be able to trigger deployments from external webhooks. Um, and we'll also have support for application deployment with specific versions. So all that is all part of our roadmap because we truly believe that application development in a local platform should not be very, very different from your actual application development. And most of your SDLC should continue to play out here as well. And so that's that's the other big focus area for this year. Great. That's awesome. And actually to sneak peek to get people excited, <laughs> I have some screenshots here that I want to share. Um, I don't know if I can do this, Nikhil, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and share some little screenshots or on how things look when it comes to packages and workflows, where when you create a new application, you will now see on the drop down new options like to be able to create new packages or new workflows. And uh, once you click that, and let me bring another image here. For example, here's a module of a query to a database, in this case, a Postgres database. And you will be able to pass, so, to pass some um, parameters to it. So your packages will be smart enough to receive some parameters and execute based upon those parameters. So this query right here, which is get users by country, will receive a country parameter. And then you will be able to reutilize this query on any application that you import this package in AppSpeed. So that way you will be able to reutilize um, this package in any of your projects. And also here's the builder on how you bring that package into your application. So here we have a application which understands that you need to pass the country parameter to it and you will be able to bind and interpolate data into that those parameters. So you can pass data from a text field, for example, or from any other widget into your uh, module and that module will receive that information and execute in the way you want. So that's a sneak peek on how uh, reusable packages will work. And uh, you know when we have more information or more publicly information to share with you, like a tutorial or something like that, we will be doing it. But yes, this is right now in close beta with some customers who are extremely excited and giving us uh, really good feedback. And, uh, and also, I want to share that again, if you want to take a look at the public roadmap, that's on our GitHub page. You can see everything that's being worked on. Uh, go into our GitHub and you can check that out. We have some questions on the chat, Nikhil. I think it's a good moment to start um, answering some of the questions. Um, let me see if I have one here. Um, okay, so we have a question around when would it be possible to create custom themes via CSS? Yeah, uh, I think this is, uh, this is a great question. As we've uh, been exploring um, custom theming via CSS, we've We've come to a very interesting conclusion. We we figured that the primary need is actually not to add custom CSS. The primary need is to improve the look and feel of our widgets by making the applications either more data dense um, or more consistent um, or have more uh, styling options so that they can actually match uh, their brand guidelines. And so what we're actually investing in today is maybe the fourth item uh, on our roadmap that uh, we're currently focused on, which is codenamed Anvil, but it's a all new 
UI builder that is going to be the fastest way for developers to build UI uh, on any platform out there. Um, and not only is it significantly faster, um, it's also responsive. It uh, comes with keyboard accessibility um, out of the box. Um, it comes with uh, the ability to uh, upload um, a theme file and modify theme variables in a consistent way that will automatically propagate across the entire application. Because the last thing you want to do is to deal with specific CSS classes that you end up overriding. And then you now need to manage the fact that, oh, this one class has an override, this other class is uh, has an override with a different value, and now they're inconsistent. So we're we're we are very focused on improving the way that UI building happens to make it a lot faster, um, ensure that there is higher data density, ensure that you're able to create applications that are closer to your, to your uh, brand guidelines and expose customizability in a way that is also easy to manage and not just customizability for the sake of customizability. Uh, so that is absolutely on our roadmap for this year as well. And then that was actually the fourth big item I wanted to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And I do know that we have been improving the theme section. So you can go to the themes in your application configuration and also not only expand the existing themes, but also you can create your own theme. So that's a way you can customize your application. And also something I wanted to bring up is custom widgets. Since custom widgets are now supported on, on any AppSuite application that you can use whatever library you wish, for example, React or Vue, there's also the section for the styling. And in there, you have the ability to actually create the CSS you wish for that particular custom widget. And custom widgets are not like determinated to a small portion of your app. You can actually create a custom widget for your navigation. You can create a custom widget for your left sidebar for anything regarding to your application. So you could build actually using custom widgets, something very customizable because you have full control of the CSS. And also now we are supporting SAS. So now it's, it's not just uh, plain CSS, but also you can use um, you know inline uh, SAS as well if you want. So that's another option in terms of customization that you can use in terms of your you know in case you're looking for more customization and being able to control the css yeah the custom widget is uh, one of uh, my uh, favorite features that uh, we recently launched uh, because it really ex it really expands the possibility of uh, widgets you can bring inside apps uh, we've seen everything from image annotators to calendar widgets uh, to data grid widgets uh, all being imported inside the platform and what's really great is you can also export these and upload them to the community portal where you can go ahead and see all the other great work that other members of the community are sharing. So if uh, your own HTML React skills aren't so great, you can head on over to the community portal and check out the work that everybody else is sharing and use those custom widgets. Uh, and if you are uh, you know, a HTML uh, React Ninja, uh, you, know, you should definitely check out the community portal and share some of your work there because I'm sure there are a lot of apps with us who will uh, definitely benefit from your work. Yeah, exactly. Go to the community portal in case you haven't. Uh, create an account and share everything you want. Let us know in the comments as well. Um, there is another question that maybe I can touch base on, and this is something actually true in some cases. Um, can you make it in terms of the JavaScript libraries that are more compatible because very few items on GS Deliver can be imported into AppSmith. And this is certainly true in some cases, but not all the cases. So for some JS libraries, you have to define specifically what version of the package you want or what type of architecture it uses. So just to give you an example, again, with custom widgets, let me bring an image on the screen right now. Um, so for example, here we have a custom widget that uses React. As you can see, we are importing React from GS Deliver. But if you take a look at the very end of the import statement, you will see a plus ESM um, you know, a portion of text at the end. That means we are pulling the ESM architecture version of this library. So it's, you have to make sure that when you, are, when you are importing libraries, you either bring the UMD or the ESM architecture library because that, those are the ones that we support currently at AppSmith. So we have noticed that, yes, some JavaScript libraries are not fully compatible 
with how AppSmith is importing those. But for some cases, and this is something that we're going to be touching base with Joseph on the live coding and the office hours that happens every Friday on how to work with different libraries depending on their architecture and depending on the way it works. Sometimes the documentation says, you know, pass parameters this way, but depending on the architecture, you might have to pass it in a different way. So yes, there's still some hiccups in some JavaScript libraries that you can import from GS Deliver that doesn't fully work. But in some cases, you have to make sure that the way you are importing that custom JavaScript library is using the ESM declaration. So that way it works with AppSmith. Um, and in this particular case, uh, um, Nikhil, is there anything you want to uh, mention in regards to compatibility in JavaScript? Yeah, uh, I think what you said was absolutely right. Uh, it essentially needs the ESM build. And some libraries may not currently have an ESM build. And so in that case, what you can do is actually create one and uh, uh, distribute it on JS Deliver and then begin to uh, import it. The other set of libraries that are currently not supported are typically libraries that require access to the document object. And the reason this isn't supported is because it becomes a security risk uh, where these libraries can actually hijack your cookies. Um, and so that's why we don't currently support it. But to get around that, what you can do is use the custom widget and use the libraries inside that because the custom widget is built on top of an iframe. And so that automatically creates a sandbox environment where you can use these libraries. Uh, so those are just two things to keep in mind uh, while thinking about using custom libraries. Great. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, 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 the security constraints is, is important for our customers to be able to control not, not openly everything to the public so that way uh, someone could hack or hijack your application. But yeah, the custom widget front opens a... <laughs> I, I mean, I cannot reinforce the benefits of custom widgets like, you know, from a personalization standpoint, the fact that you can bring any library, that you can control the CSS and the HTML structure. So custom widgets are actually an answer to most of the uh, a lot of the questions that we get. There is another question which can be tricky to answer because it depends on wh what type of architecture you're trying to achieve. But the question is, is AppSmith uh, supporting microservice architecture? And, and I can answer that um, by saying yes and no. It depends on your architecture. So if you want AppSmith to be part of your um, microservice architecture, AppSmith can be run as a Docker image. So the answer is yes. The other thing is that AppSmith has in, in the embedded image a MongoDB instance and obviously the file system where, for example, uh, some files are stored. But that doesn't mean you cannot detach those specific architecture elements like the database and the file system and the Redis database um, into a separate service so you could run AppSmith in a stateless, stateless architecture. So if you need to, for example, scale up and down or have another AppSmith instance that connects to that database, to that Redis instance, and to that file system, we can support that. And actually, in the community portal, there is an article I wrote on how to run AppSmith completely serverless and having a separate database that supports AppSmith using MongoDB Atlas and using Redis in an outside, you know, having all of the architectural elements outside of the Docker image. So the answer is yes, you have the control to define how your Docker image is going to run. And at the end, containers, which is the basics of the microservice architecture, is something that obviously we support because we run on Docker. Also, if you use Kubernetes, we do support also Kubernetes. And you can find our Helm package in, in the Helm repository. And definitely you can run AppSmith inside a microservices Kubernetes architecture. And you can use any of the existing products like Convoy or anything like that to manage your fleet of microservices. And AppSmith can be one of those. So I will say that the answer is yes, right, uh, Anikil? Yeah, I, I think uh, the question is a little ambiguous, but in terms of scalability, yes, uh, if uh, you're using Kubernetes, uh, it can certainly scale that way. Um, and also, if uh, you have a microservice and you're trying to uh, you know, integrate with that, it, it supports it as well. But if you're running AppSmith from source, so AppSmith runs as a monolith, and AppSmith itself cannot be broken up um, and done that way. But as long as you're using uh, Kubernetes pods and you're not deploying from source, it should be fine. 
Excellent. Um, question here from Carlos. He's saying, when will we have the package and workflows available? We should talk about that, but can you remind us, uh, you know, what time do we expect to have that, at least in the cloud version, for people to start using it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're starting our beta uh, by the end of March, um, so you can look forward to that. Uh, you can also write to support at AppSmith uh, for early access if you're interested in being part of uh, a slightly more closed beta program and working um, uh, on something that is slightly more in development so that uh, you can give us early feedback. We're always open to that. Uh, but the first beta will be uh, in early March, and uh, we expect uh, you know to go full launch uh, probably sometime in June. Awesome. We have a question from our um, one of our community members saying um, that they find the debugger difficult to use, that sometimes, for example, error messages can be kind of hard to understand. Uh, invalid character, GS test, uh, you know, which is string, which invalid character. Do we have anything in the roadmap related to improving the debugger? I know we have been improving it. There are definitely a better debugger right now in AppSmith that a few months ago, but do we have anything in the roadmap, Nikhil, that you can talk about the debugger? Yeah, uh, I think, uh, you know, we don't have a big bang thing uh, planned around it, but I think that these are very important quality of life uh, improvements that uh, we certainly need to focus on uh, and improve the net quality of the product. Certainly this error message is quite ambiguous uh, today and it can be quite hard to debug. And uh, it's certainly, it's, it's, we have an entire initiative plan around the new developer experience um, where we are trying to make it a lot easier for developers to get started with and help them debug and uh, build their first application. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, this is going to be a part of that where we pick this up and improve the net experience of building applications to make it a lot faster on the platform. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I again, I encourage everyone to go to the uh, GitHub, not only to see the roadmap, but also like to contribute. And if you want something to actually happen, you can always open an issue and contribute back to the product. Like it's fully open source on the uh, under the Apache 2.0 license. So if something is not the way you want, also you can contribute to us and be part of the community. Go to our Discord channel and, and help us grow because that's definitely one of the key milestones that we have, which is not only grow as a product, but also grow as a community, um, which reminds me that I uh, we just launched the... AppSmith contributor role, the community contributor role. So if you want to be part of that, let us know. Reach out in the Discord channel. You will get so you will get, for example, some uh, moderator roles not only on Discord but also on the community portal. You will be able to actually publish articles without having to wait it to get review and approved. And there are other some other benefits like swag, exclusive swag, and things like that. And we have the AppSmith Expert um, program, which is going to be launching soon, which is, has a higher tier. So uh, we get your questions more directly to the team. You're going to be able to have access to closed betas, like, for example, the workflows and the, uh, and the uh, reusable packages that we're talking about and things like that. So we want to bring members not only to use AppSmith, but also to contribute back to the product and become advocates of our product. So stay tuned for that. And if you are interested in participating in either of these programs, let us know in Discord. Reach out to me or to Joseph, who is actually managing this uh, effort, and let us know in the chat as well. We have a question from Oscar. Um, he's saying, I have a question slash request. Is it possible to add a form that is not a model? I mean, these web forms or windows that slides from one side to the of the screen, like the navigation menu. Yeah, uh, I think this is um, what, this is a documented community feature. I believe it's called the sidebar drawer, and uh, we currently do not have this. But uh, as part of the new UI building experience, uh, we are certainly going to be adding this as well. Awesome. That's that's good to know. Probably Oscar is going to be happy about it. Um, also, we got a question from Carlos in terms of speed. One of the problems that I have is the loading speed of the pages. Is there any plan to improve that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think performance is absolutely um, top of mind for us. Stability and performance are the core tenants at AppSmith, and uh, we are uh, you know, heavily investing in improving this. Um, now, 
you know, there are a couple of key areas here. One is we want to ensure that performance does not degrade with complexity of applications, because that's going to be essential for us to be useful for mission critical apps. So that's going to be our uh, first port of call. Um, and the second one is to ensure that AppSmith um, remains as lightweight as possible so that uh, we're not actually adding to the latency uh, of already robust applications. Um, over here, how you as a community member can actually help is by reaching out to the AppSmith team, either via supported AppSmith or via Intercom, um, talking about the problem that you have, um, helping us debug your application uh, to understand where the performance bottleneck is, um, because we do have a team dedicated to exactly this and ensuring that uh, we're able to uh, develop, uh, deliver very fast applications, because our goal is to improve operational efficiency and slow applications go against that. So uh, it's absolutely in our interest to make applications load as fast as possible. Yeah, I can assure that uh, performance is one of the key things that our team is focusing. I can resonate that with from our CTO, Arpit, who is strongly pushing to have more and more focus on stability and performance. So I can definitely promise that not only as we launch new features that support capabilities our customer needs, we're also making sure that in terms of performance, as these features are growing, we're not only maintaining a good uh, stability, but actually improving it. So I can speak that uh, uh, internally, performance, stability is one of the key goals for, for the next months. Um, all right, we have some other question. I think we already answered this. <clears throat> when is the component slash model based development coming? Um, can you remind us again, Nikhil? For I think everyone's very excited about reusability yeah. and packages. I'm glad to see there's uh, so much interest in it. But yeah, yeah uh, it, it will be in uh, open beta by the end of March, and uh, we'll probably be planning a launch by the end of Q2. Excellent. So I think we don't have any other questions. I think we answered most of those questions. There was another one. This one, this was a big question. We already answered the the. Um, uh, the microservice architecture, but also he was mentioning if we can integrate Angular and a Spring Boot. And the answer is also yes. Uh, as you can see, we explore custom widgets and you can bring any library of your choice. We actually have, and this is something I wanted to encourage everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're coming along with more custom widget tutorials, not only with React, but also with other libraries like Svelf, like uh, view and like Angular, and at the end, again, you can bring your desired libraries into your custom widgets. We have templates right now in AppSmith for uh, Vue and for React or Vanilla, but again, you can bring Angular and use Angular as part of your custom widget or Vue.js or, or Strelf, so any JavaScript library or framework out there you can bring to your custom widget. So the answer is yes. And in terms of Spring Boot, if your project is an API, we have the, the, the REST API data source. So yes, you can integrate your Spring Boot Java project with AppSmith by exposing, exposing it as an, as an API, as a REST API. And we support most of the authentication methods out there, like basic authentication, like OAuth 2.0, like JSON web tokens. So yes, the answer is that uh, you're able to bring all of that into your architecture, whether it is microservices, custom widgets with Angular, and your Spring Boot API services connected, all connecting all of that into AppSmith. So um, I will say that the answer is yes to all of those questions, right, Nikhil? Yes, exactly. With the custom widget, it becomes really easy to um, just uh, bring in uh, Angular uh, as well as React or Vue. And um, so it's, Spring Boot is typically like a backend service, but as long as you're exposing an API, you can use the REST API to just integrate with it. Right. One last question we have here uh, from Carlos as well is that do we plan to integrate a report generator in the future? Um, I'm not sure exactly what we mean by report generator, but I'm assuming it's some sort of um, PDF um, report of uh, information that probably needs to be emailed. Um, I think we are not going to directly integrate a report generator, but with our workflows feature, it's going to be very easy for you to uh, set up a cron or a webhook to um, trigger some information, uh, and you can send it either via SMTP 
um, over uh, the internet. So it will be very easy to create like a HTML report in an email uh, or even use uh, you know a PDF generator kind of service to generate a PDF and, and send that report out. So uh, no, no plans to directly integrate a report generator, but uh, I think with the, the backend workflows option, it should be very easy to create and send reports uh, from as the past. Yeah, exactly. Once workflows are out there, you can bring like a webhook to generate a PDF, or you can also use reusable packages to um, to create a package that uses GS to PDF. So you can transform um, an HTML structure or, or whatever piece of content into a PDF, and then you can send the output of that PDF to a workflow or a, or a document viewer uh, widget that we do have in AppSmith and people will be able to see a PDF, download a PDF or now that uh, workflows are going to be available very soon you will be able, like Nikhil mentioned share that on an email or have a workflow-based trigger that actually generates those images sorry, those PDF from data sources using reusable packages so things are coming along and binding together really nicely Um, I think, let me see if I have any other questions here. Again, some questions around PDF. Do we have any recommendation on creating PDF that don't ship my data to a third party? Yeah. I would say actually, that, yeah, go ahead. Actually, I believe there is a, um, there is a community post on how you can convert HTML to PDF. And so what you can do is, uh, you can have the HTML defined in like a JS object. And you can use the um, HTML to PDF library. I forgot which one it was. Um, you could install install that inside your apps with app, um, and then that will generate a PDF and you'll be able to download that. So that's the typical uh, solution that I've seen. Um, but uh, you know, if uh, you are facing any other uh, concerns around this, please feel free to raise a GitHub issue. Uh, we'll track it down and uh, we'll see how we can better uh, support this particular use case. Because clearly, there seems to be a lot of interest for it. Yeah, exactly. And um, I, I, there's a few other questions in the chat about PDF and reports. And I think one of that's one of the high requested features or questions that we get. And there are multiple ways to achieve it. So I'm going to be talking to our master, um, Joseph, so he can elaborate further on these topics on the upcoming office hours and also the the uh, live coding. We're actually going to have a live coding on March. So we can elaborate further. How can you achieve, like, for example, crystal reports alike uh, reporting with custom widgets? We had one with the uh, Gantt charts. You can watch that on our YouTube channel uh, and where Joseph built a full Gantt chart using uh, custom widgets based on port your data sources. And it actually works pretty nicely. Also in a Kanban board, also in a crystal-like report. So we're going to be exploring further how you can achieve a like reports that other tools has using custom widgets, passing your data and being able, and in the future, using the reusable package, the, the close future. So that way, once you build your custom widget that receives certain parameters that works nicely with the libraries, you can just build a reusable package that manages all of this and you can reshare these packages across your apps with application and being able to reuse this internally. So I'll make sure because I see that that's one of the biggest questions we get to work next to Joseph to create more tutorials, more community portal articles and more videos around how you can achieve certain things. Because the, the good thing about AppSmith is that we might not provide certain feature alike other tool, but you can achieve all of that because you have full access and full control to, for example, custom widgets where you can build er everything the way you actually need from a CSS standpoint, from the functional standpoint, structure, and et cetera. So I think that rather us giving all of the features as other features, as other products provide, we give you the tools so you can have everything the way you need and you can have full control of that, right? Um, I think we're going to be closing questions right here. Nikhil, we have been almost an hour live. So I don't know if you have any closing words to our community or anything else you wanted to share. Yeah. Uh, first off, uh, you know, it was uh, really great uh, talking about uh, what we have in store. Um, we're, we're fully committed to making AppSmith the fastest way for developers to 
actually build applications that improve their organizational efficiency. Um, and with that, uh, you know, the community is honestly the bedrock of everything in AppSmith. Uh, I, I certainly want to just firstly take a moment to just thank all of you uh, for all of your help, uh, be it um, helping other community members, uh, raising GitHub issues, um, or uh, you know, even uh, just giving us uh, the right feedback so that uh, we can improve the product. Uh, please keep doing what you're doing. Um, we're looking forward to more contribution in terms of uh, templates and custom widgets on the community portal. Uh, continue helping each other out and uh, raising GitHub issues. Um, and more than anything else, uh, please keep telling your friends and co-workers about AppSmith and how it can help them develop faster. Yeah, that's right. Uh, thank you so much for all the support that we have gotten from you, our loved community. Keep up the good work. Please let us know all the questions you have. It's great for me to be able to connect with all of you on Discord. I have received a lot of direct messages like, hey, can you build this type of demo? I want to see AppSmith working with this library and things like that. So it's always good for us that you let us know what type of content you want to see because at the end, that's, the, that's our goal to create content for all of you that resonates with what you're doing. So please let us know on the chat, on Discord, let me know directly, even on LinkedIn, what are you building? What type of applications you're doing with AppSmith? And we'll be more than happy to create more content that helps you continue building with AppSmith. Also, we have every week an event. So go to events.appsmith.com and also in our community portal, you will see the events uh, menu item. And there you will see, for example, what we're going to be having for the following weeks. Next week, we have a actual case study with one of our community members. He is the CTO of uh, one of the case studies that we have in our website, the R Fertility Clinic. For the following week, we're going to be on the release jam. We're going to be exploring even further some of the things like reusable packages and workflows. And obviously, sign up for the AppSmith build because you will see firsthand not only how uh, we are launching these features, but actually we're going to be showcasing how they actually work and how you can learn to make that happen. So with that said, Nikhil, thank you so much for your time. Thank you everyone who joined today. Stay tuned for upcoming videos because we are continuously publishing more videos. I can let you know that right now I'm uploading videos for custom widgets so we can uh, continue to elaborate how they work because they are a large feature and also AppSmith AI. I'm uploading the video for how to use the text classification and text summarization. And for the upcoming week, we're going to be having also how to classify images and how to work with images in AppSpeed AI. So stay tuned definitely to our YouTube channel, to our community portal. And I think that's it for today, Nikhil. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Kevin. See you. All right. Thank you, everyone. See you next week and stay tuned to more videos. Bye-bye, everyone.